Um, do you want to introduce our guest? <laughs> yes, I will do that now. Um, our lovely guest is in the green room, so she is ready to come on. She is the 2020 Olympics that just happened just last week. Uh, gold medalist in the women's 4x4 and bronze medalist in the mixed relay. 2017 world champ at the 4x4 in London. Game world Doha. champ in Doha. 14-time um, All-American NCAA indoor record holder at 50.34. And 4x4 champ, NCAA indoor, indoor champ in the 400 and 4x4 as well. She's probably most known for this crazy anchor leg that she ran that we're going to talk about later on. Um, and I, I specifically put in the notes that she went to USC, and I feel like you are purposely not saying that. I mean, and I find that rude and disrespectful. Hi, Kendall. We're trying to get closer, but Kobu's like sitting here. There you go, baby. Yes, you 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 went to that copycat USC. Um, you know the real one. <laughs> you know when she went there, she you know national championship won. Um. How Hi. are you? <laughs> Hi, good morning. Welcome to Track Girl Summer. Thanks for having me. First of all, here. where are you? Are you in LA? Oh God! Oh Thank God. you for waking up super yeah. early for us. And the curls are popping. Yes. Love that for y'all, anything. Say that again. Sorry. She said for us. I said for y'all, anything. I'll wake up. Wake up early. Dad. <laughs> y'all. We're just gonna start off with. Or do you have it loaded up? We're gonna just. We're just gonna start off with one thing before we oh, even get to start up. talking to you. Good job. Okay. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna pull pull this up because we need to figure out how so you get the stick and this handoff was terrible and you just yeah. were like I'm down mm, how much were you how much were you down by at this point? A good oh, 80? Like 30, 40? I'm gonna give him 80. No big deal. Yeah. No. And you just said <laughs> I'm gonna go get her. Pretty much. She said. <laughs> well, <laughs> going through your mind down this back stretch, yeah. like, did you know <clears throat> that, like, did you, like, measure where first, like, yeah, that's a little that's bit more 50. than. That's <laughs> 50. I couldn't tell, like, the camera angle that everyone else sees versus, like, the in person. I was like, oh, she's not that far ahead. Like, I'm good. I'm good. It's okay. And by winning this. Relay, you also won at USC the national championship, the second in your in the women's history for USC. Hmm. Yeah, sure. no, that was super cool because we had never won it like in my four years, and I was a senior at that point. So it was like finally after four long years of like trying to do this, we've done it. My, my last time running like, for you. My mouth is open. I still yeah, like at this point, get like, chills when I watch this race because I'm like, she said to the line, you better <laughs> lean, girl. <laughs> lean because I'm coming for you. Like, you just dark in the water. Got to eat. Gosh darn. Yeah. You look tired because you ran your little butt off. You know, a little bit. <laughs> wow. <laughs> what was your split on this again? 50.0 something. Okay, girl. Okay, girl. We see you. We see you with the five. We see you with the five. And so, <laughs> you clearly you are no no rookie to the relays, and I feel like you had to be a team player because we got fourth at trials. And so you said, you know what? I'm gonna be on the mixed relay. You were on double duty. And then you were you ran the rounds for the four by four. Can you scoot over? Like, to get it. Get I don't close like to you me. that much, man. I I know I smell a little bit, but like it's gonna be okay. <laughs> Um, but so how, how was that? You got the first ever in history Olympic bronze medal for the mixed four by four. You're like in history for all time. She, but she's in history time mm -hmm. too, because this is also team USA six straight four by four win as well. So congrats on just being a part of history period. Oh, 
I didn't even know that. That's cool. Um, the, <laughs> we do our research. Was it was fun. The bronze medal is like nice to be etched in history. I wish it was gold, but um, you know, bronze is cool too. Y'all almost didn't history. anything. We almost didn't make the final. If we gonna be honest, oh you know? lord, come on, Corey, with the shade. It wasn't shade. It's like gratitude because she said you, you were right. You're right. We almost weren't in the finals, so let me let me be happy for just being able to run in it, you know. But it was fun. It was, fun. It was definitely different. It was different for sure. And I, because I would get so much anxiety because everyone kind of had the same idea: men on the outside legs, women on the inside legs. But because I always freak out, like, what if they line me up? Like, if I had to go head to head with Frank Curley, honestly, that was why I wasn't interested. If I had to go head to head with my, if I had to go head to head with Norman, like, all right. Okay, right. you going and you just see this dude hawking you down? What well, like? <laughs> but that's the thing. Coaches have me like I train with Michael Norman, Ry Benjamin, so he's had me literally line up next to them before during workouts. So I was prepared. I was like, if I have to run against a man, I've done it before against two of the fastest in practice. So like, I know how to stay in my own zone, stay in my own lane, and do what I'm supposed to do. That's good. Mm, that explains yeah. why you ran that last leg. That, that we just showed so composed, like you didn't panic. And like you said, you know how to stay in your lane, stay in your zone and strike when you need to. Okay, girl. Okay. Exactly. Girl. When you stay ready, you ain't got to get ready. Facts. Um, so you were working the whole meet because the mixed relays opened the meet and the four by four closed it. Like what was your Tokyo experience like since you were working all, all week? I'm not even going to lie. It was boring. It was boring. It's the COVID, it's the COVID Olympics. Um, yeah, it was like, you know, thankful that we even had it at all. And Tokyo, like, did everything they could to keep us safe. And they were great on that end. Um, I just really wish we could have seen the city. So it was literally like, wake up, go to the dining hall, sit back in your room, do it again, like, day in, day out. So, like, there wasn't much to do mm -hmm. or much to see. So... It was pretty chill. It was a lot of what I do at home, like Netflix and YouTube. Nothing, nothing much had changed. Just the city. I, that, I, my heart breaks to hear that because that was one of the things that, like, I was like, I feel really bad for this team because, especially for the first timers, for your first time, like, the Olympics is yes, you're there for business, but it's a whole experience, like. Everything from going in the warehouse and picking out your gear, which I want to hear about the gear. Is there anything special that you got that you're like, mm, yes. Um, going to other events, meeting other athletes from other sports, the opening ceremony. I can't believe Team USA didn't, you know, do the opening ceremony. I can't believe y'all didn't camp. And camp. That's, thank you. <laughs> no relay camp. And I mean, camp is there for a number of reasons. Like, I feel like it's it kind of starts the team camaraderie. We have game night. We, you know, and no camp. So so talk to us about, you know, the, the experience with, with no camp. You This was your first Olympics, but you've been on several world championship teams. So, you know, yeah. you know, camp is, is a part of the routine. How, how was that, um, you know, experience kind of just going into things and kind of having to figure it out? Yeah, it was like, well, I got there five days before my first event. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm someone who can adjust very quickly for the most part. Like, if it's bright outside, I'm up. If it's dark, I'm asleep. Mm -hmm. So I didn't have too much of an issue with that. But just for the sake, like we had such... <laughs> you look good. We, had such we were saying a lot of Team USA looks flat, but you look you on. Yeah. Thank you. Um, we had such a young team, like you said. For a lot of us, it was our first time, like... Like you said, my first Olympics, but I've been on previous world teams, so I kind of know how it worked. But for a lot of people, this was their first senior team at all. So, like, I wish they would have gotten the chance to experience the camp, have more time to acclimate. And I think, you know, people wouldn't have looked so flat. So that kind of – that was kind of sad for that. That yeah. sake, just get more time to know each other, know the coaches. A lot of people hadn't interacted before. Mm -hmm. You have, like – a young generation and I don't want to say older, but older generation. And I, I think, I think it would have been nice to just, just meet everybody in a laid back environment. Yeah. And you said you can adapt very well. And I feel like you had to adapt a lot last year because training in COVID, I heard you didn't have a track. Y'all were going out in the streets, getting it in. 
Um, what was that like? You know, you were training with, with Riot and Michael, but, like, how was that training with no track? It sucked. Like, we were literally in the streets. We were, like, we were in people's neighborhoods. We were running on horse trail, like, dodging horses, the highway next to us. Like, it was, we were literally in the trenches. Like, I know a lot of people were like, oh, like, COVID year, like, we struggled. Like, no, you didn't have a track for, like, a week. Like, we literally were without a track for, like, months. And we're just, like, really coach coming up with creative ways, running 300 straights, like, just really making it do whatever whatever we could. That's great. Because also just, like, mentally, like, when I have a hard workout, like, having – I know where the cones are. I, I can pace myself. And like you, you like, okay, I know where I, you know where you are to work out because your cones are there. You hear the whistle and like to not have, because I'm like, you over here like, okay, when I hit this tree, that's a hundred meters. <laughs> Hopefully this car doesn't move because I know that's 50. Like, how are you able just to even just pace yourself? Honestly, it was like, it was at a certain point, we kind of got used to it. Like that was our new norm. Like we had been at that horse trail day after day and we're like all right we know like literally this tree is going to be about 75 meters like we just got literally just adjusted at that point because we were there so often that was our new norm i'm over here like dang i'd be tripping over running against a man in a, in a mixed relays and she going head to head with horses <laughs> honestly, <laughs> honestly. like she said it was a goon to a goblin I'm, I'm racing horses that but i think that's just like a testament to like your guys' drive and, like, your guys' commitment to excellence because you weren't going to let not having a track get in a way of running track and field. Like, that's insane to me, and I just think I have to applaud you because y'all were, were really making it work. <laughs> Thanks. You tried. You tried. What is it like training with Rye and Michael? Because I know that they are best friends, roommates, but I see you in with the Snapchat. It was not the Snapchat. No, on the there. IG stories. You always in the mix and they're always messing with you. And I just want to know what it is. That dynamic. I love them. Like, they're younger than me, but I'm, like, the oldest one out of the group. But they're definitely, like, annoying little big brother types. Uh, because, like, it was just the three of us for so long. We went pro at the same time. So it was just me, Mike, and Rye all the time. And uh, we've, got, we've gotten really close. Definitely, definitely really close. You know, going through hell and training together uh, really bonds you but we have so much fun they're just fun like you see their personalities like they're funny guys and it's uh it's always interesting there's never a dull moment with those two I'll say that and speaking of going pro I see you got your NB on the chest I feel like you're part of this new like new balance is is investing in the sprints and you are one of like part of that that new movement in the forefront. And I also, one of the things I, I love about New Balance is I feel like they are very female forward. Like I, every time I see them do something with their women, it's just like always fierce. And like, what is it like being part of that company? Cause it's, I don't feel like it's known for sprints and like, you're like one of the faces of their sprints department now. Yeah, no, I'm so excited. Like they've really hopped on the sprint wave. Like me, Cindy McLaughlin, Gabby Thomas, Vernon Norwood, Trayvon, the men's side. Um, I love it. Like, it's a, a smaller company, I want to say, at least for sprints. So, like, we do get a lot of attention. We do get a lot of emphasis put on us. And I love that. I like being used in their marketing and, like, part of their photo shoots and things like that. Um, so it's really fun. It's cute. It's really fun. Thank that you. Green <laughs> is very cute. Yeah. I think um, that's one of the things that, first of all, in my generation, New Balance was probably more known for distance runners. And so now to mm -hmm. see them moving into the sprints, but also seeing them using more of the athletes in their marketing, mm -hmm. it just elevates everybody. I love every time us. I see a commercial with you. Like, yes. I, I live for it. Same. Yeah, no, it's a Same. good feeling. Mm -hmm. um, Cornell Stevenson wants to know, are you all still coached by Quincy? I love Quincy. Yes. Great Please give him a hug me mm -hmm. today. Um, and Char and Friday is being shady. <laughs> what was the name of the male relay coach? No one is trying to change to claim the men's relay. Y'all did good in the forefront before y'all could claim it. You know, it's mine. Um, well, one of the things I wanted to talk to you about was I, I read this article about you and 
it basically said like you just go all out when it comes to racing and like it got you fourth but like got you a place on the team but like we saw in in this in the clip that we played like how do you approach races what's your mentality what's your race strategy um okay i think it's definitely changed over the years because i've gotten older and more experienced and all that good stuff so i think now it's like more of a i'm supposed to be here like i belong here i've been on team since 2017 at this point like it's time to it's time to grow up and finally be like yeah you're supposed to be here you're not supposed to like just make the relay pool you're supposed to be on the podium and then at the championship you're supposed to be on the podium again um so now it's kind of like run like you're supposed to be here like you've earned your spot like have a name for yourself like stop only being associated with relays like make your mark in the individual so now it's just like approaching it like go for it like you have nothing to lose at this point no one's ever expecting you to like be in the race anyways like so go for it like go make it known i love that i literally went through that same um transition and once I like really accepted that like you I belong here, I saw my career turn around. So Did I Did you love say you that. had a case of imposter syndrome? I still suffer with imposter syndrome. So <laughs> yes, absolutely. I so think, yeah. I think I have the opposite of imposter syndrome. Yes, I like agree. I think I'm just crazy delusional and mm-hmm. I, it doesn't matter what you put me in, I'm like, I can figure out a, like if you put me if you put me in the marathon today I would be like, okay, Corey, if you just stay with the front pack, no one can sprint with you at the end. That would be my race. You have like, you know, in, I'm insane. Literally. As you have to and, be a little bit to do the sport. So. But like you said, you belong here. I don't belong here. But in, in, <laughs> if I was a shot put out, I would be like, okay, Corey, just, you have speed. Like, you I would try to like, I would try to finagle my way onto the podium, no matter what thing you put me into. Oh, yeah, yeah. One thing... I love learning about you because I was stalking you on the internet, if you haven't noticed, is you give back to your, to the gener- to the next generation. So you grew up volunteering with the West Hembrook Pines Optimist Track Club. You worked with children as a volunteer for Coaching Corps. And then you also volunteered with Boys in Sport. Can you just tell me, like, one, like, why you feel so ne- it's so necessary to volunteer and, like, are you trying to give kids like what you didn't have? And if so, like, what are you like trying to give to these kids in track and field or in sports? Yeah. Um, my parents have always, always been really adamant about like, you're blessed, go be a blessing to somebody else. Mm. So that's like always been a factor growing up. So it was just really natural for me. It was always like, we're in school, we're playing a sport, playing an instrument and like volunteering on the weekends. So for me, it was just a natural progression um and I just like it I really really like it like you said I didn't have that in the sport growing up and I wish I would have had like a mentor or somebody to show me the ropes somebody to ask questions so I want to make sure like I'm providing that because how am I going to complain about not having something and then go and continue to perpetuate it so if I can give back or I can like make a difference and make somebody's day by like replying to a dm which like you know is nothing major for me it's just like oh I'm, I'm replying back um I'm gonna do that Okay. Okay. I love that. This, this generation um, continuing to be a tangible resource for the generations to come. Yeah, I think that's that's super important because, like, my mom says, like, to who much is given, much is expected. And then she, she quotes it every time she volunteers me for something that I did not agree to. And she just is like, well, here, that's – but I think – I I'll be calling so. you for the Natasha Hastings Foundation. We can always use reputable young yeah. women like yourself to speak to the young ladies and give them words of encouragement and yeah, encourage sure. them to go to the real USC, the original. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Okay. Um so you have your you have your degree in business administration. Are you going to be like a boss lady, mobile, after track, during track? Do you have a business that I can buy something from? Like, what do you want to do? You want to run the business side of track all summer? What's going on? (laughs) Hopefully I never have to labor in life. But if I have to, 
Yes. <laughs> no, it's so I just have to talk about you know what we do for work is manual labor, right? Like if we really if we really no. sit down <laughs> and think about what we do, we're just toiling in the sun all day. It's, it's fun. This is true. But we do manual labor for, for work. In the hot sun. Yeah, and I've had enough. So when I'm done, I'm gonna try to do anything else. I'm trying to wait. That's it. That's a wrap. I used it all up from seven to whenever I retire. That's enough. Um but I hope, you know, I want to eventually open a nonprofit and run that. So that's where my degree will hopefully come into play. That's that's what I want to do. Run my own nonprofit. <laughs> what it, do you like what would this non if if you had all the funding in the world, like what would your nonprofit mm-hmm. focus on? What are you passionate about? Um it would be for young women, maybe I'll include men, but focuses on young women, <laughs> young women, uh, <laughs> trying to just essentially doing what I'm now mentoring, providing resources, um, college information, tutoring services, uh, athletic side, just really, really providing a bunch of different mentorship tools for young women. I love that. Also, um, I do this every show. You reminded me since you're saying you wanted to help out black women and you didn't want to <laughs> labor. Um, if you're watching, support a black woman. Send a black woman some money today. Find someone with a Venmo Agreed. account. Send your send your mother something. Kindle, you got Cash App, Venmo. Like, <laughs> send a black woman some money today. It doesn't have to be me, but probably should be Kindle because she's out here helping the youth. So what's <laughs> next? Are you um, competing for the rest of the summer? I'm done. I'm done. I didn't. Yeah. I didn't know I was gonna be done. But I was at practice the other day, and I was like, "Yeah, I don't think I want to do this anymore." Like, I think I just—I think I want to wrap it up. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I'm just gonna chill. I'm just gonna go home, see my family, go on vacation, and and relax. You know, we'll we'll pick that up again next season. So I love that. I feel like sometimes I I always like. You want to be done, but then there's this guilt of like, oh, I need to, and you sound really sure like, no, nope. <laughs> I'm done. I think. I There's this, there's this, you know, we're blackity black here, so we talk about it. Like, there is like a celebration among women, like struggling and just working extra hard, but let's celebrate women being able to say, nope, I've done enough. Right. I'm going to take a vacation. I'm going to take a break. Mm-hmm. Y'all miss me. And I'll be back. And I think, right. like, the... Um, Well-deserved, too. We've worked mm-hmm. for five years straight trying to get to the Olympics. You you got to, you got there. But I also think people don't understand, like, the emotional high that you go get, like, just the struggle of the trials. And then you have the emotional high of the Olympics. And it wasn't the Olympics that you wanted. Like, I feel like we need to have a conversation about probably how mentally draining it was oh, to like. My mom says you're so humble and she loves you. Joanna, is it, she, I don't think she's ever been in the chat for any of our lives, but she popped up for Kendall. I'll talk for Kendall. Hey, I'm, I'm mad because she's, she's literally in the room on the floor. Um, but I was, what was I saying? I'm sorry. I don't know what I was saying. Oh, just like the, the draining of memory. like, like you said, you're, you were bored, but it was also probably like, you couldn't you couldn't go out and walk around. You had to like go to practice, come home, and like to do that for for you know a few weeks. It's like all right, like after that, you're probably like I'm tapped. And what we have to do yeah. is like and it's so draining. You had the Olympic trials a month before that. I said that. So like mm-hmm. the, the yeah, I be I'm trying to keep up with the chat and stuff. My bad, my bad, my bad. Um, yeah. so I I get it, I get it, but mm-hmm. like I think it's gonna be fun for you to play because you know she is. An Olympic medalist. How do you say like Olympic medalist, but like multiple, so people know that you are Girl, multiple, multiple medalist. Mm-hmm. She got the O L Y on her IG. She got, she got put it up. I sure do. <laughs> do do that. Do that registration, let, girl. Let them yes, know. Put that I, up. I do need to do that. Well, okay, yeah. where are we going on vacation? Invite me. Girl, I don't even know. I don't even know. I'm trying to see what COVID is not about to shut down and um, try to make my way over there before it happens. So. Right. I wanted to go on vacation too, and COVID, COVID got me like exactly. I was down. Trying to, I was trying to get on a Delta, right. go somewhere, and Del- the Delta variant said stay home. So exactly. <laughs> so we'll see if that really happens. Maybe a staycation. Are you getting married? Ooh. 
I don't know, some comment said she's getting married, and I was like, I did extensive research on Kindle. Let me know when my wedding is so I can show up, because I, I have plans, but... So, guys, yeah. so, like I said, send a black woman some money. If you're trying to holler at Kindle, like, slide in the DMs with, with you know... With money. With money, with money. and a LinkedIn resume, and um, maybe, maybe Kindle will be getting married. Maybe she will. <laughs> But, like, here's the thing. Before you ask what Kendall Ellis brings to the table, which is two Olympic gold medals, um, ask yourself, do you even have a home to put this table in? Not a home. People ask them what you bring to the table. Where are you going to put this table, sir? <laughs> That's yeah, the you can't ever ask what I bring to the table if you're coming to me. Obviously, there is something you saw that she was interested in, so... <laughs> Let me tell you something. She's smart. She had a 4.7 out of high school. Okay. She's smart. She's talented. She's got a heart for the kids. She's got the most beautiful smile and, and, and radiant skin in the world. She got a business degree. Okay. She can probably flip whatever bag. She got a body, yaddy, 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 yaddy. Okay. <laughs> so, so, fellas, fellas, if you're trying to get Kendall to be your wife, okay. Come correct is all I'm saying. Here at Trackball Summer, we make love connections. Do we? I love that. Love well, you're doing if, if, if someone slides in her DM today <laughs> off of this interview, or maybe after the replay, and she gets married, all I know is that I'm getting invited to the wedding. <laughs> oh, 100%. <laughs> you're the catalyst. I love, I, here's the thing. I don't want to have a wedding of myself, but I love being a guest. <laughs> I love all the slides, oh, the cha-cha, the electric. The slides. I, I want to do all the slides. Kendall, I apologize. <laughs> for... Watch, the, watch the DMs be jumping, though. Watch the DMs be jumping. And if you slide in the DMs, let just, just let it be known that you're you're there because of Track Girl Summer, okay? Because we want our credit. Right. Well, Corey's credit. <laughs> um... I'm not going to DMs now. Um, I'll give you a 10% cut. Of it. 10% of what, though? I want it, but I just don't I want to know what the, I want my 10%. I just don't know what, what the cut is from. Okay, we already got a, we already got a suitor coming your way. He says he's going to take – he said not today, though. I think it's because he's trying to get that LinkedIn together or maybe get a wire so he can come correct in the Venmo. But, okay, sir. Yeah, I, the the coffee was a mistake, guys, and I apologize, but it was necessary. Um, okay, so we're, we're not going to see you for the rest of the season, and I kind of love that for you because you've given us so much. Such for us, but good for you. <laughs> um, is there any other way that we can support you? Follow Kendi Kindle. What's Ken, her? Kendi Kindle. Kendi underscore. <laughs> Kendi underscore Kendall. Yeah. Okay. K E N D I, not a Y, mm -hmm. underscore Kindle. Um, you know, yes. if you're following Tracker Summer and not following Kindle, what are we doing? What are we what doing? What are we doing? You're on, is it the same name for Twitter? <laughs> yep. Same and you can see her on TikTok media. doing dances with Michael Norman and Ryan uh -huh. <laughs> Maybe. No? You know, maybe they'll do TikToks with me. Ryan's more of a TikToker, I feel like, than I am. We'll see. Okay find out and you know shout out to us united, united university <laughs> of southern california um I'm I, really, uh, and you got we were about to end this interview but i have one more question go gamecocks because <laughs> she said fight on so go ahead what's your question yeah you're the tree whatever <laughs> <laughs> i think it's not Aww. fun um, well, we love women in sports and women, we always talk about how we need to see women in, in, in roles of leadership, but at USC, we have not only Carol running things, Joanna out here, because y'all know it, Joanna, we're going to have her on the show, I'll tell you why I love Joanna, and oh. now we, you guys just added Carmelita to the squad. The Jenner. Mm -hmm. What is it That's like being around so many great female coaches? Former amazing female legend. There's still legends, not former, but like female yeah. athletes. What is that like? 
it's so dope. You know, they always say if you can see it, you can be it. And it's just like so inspiring when they've done everything that I'm trying to do. So it's like they're great resources. They're great people to talk to. They're also just great people off the track, like, as you know. So it's just it's it's super inspiring. It's like, all right, you've transitioned so well also like out of professional athletics yourself. And it's inspiring to see that, like, all right, this is feasible. Like you can you can do everything that you wanted to do and still be successful afterwards and find ways to still be connected. So I love them. They're all great women. These such great answers. Oh my god. I just <laughs> I really love it. Like there's so many like quotes that I need to write in like, my journal. I'm a starter journal. I don't have one, but I'm a starter journal and start writing these quotes right. that you wrote and yeah. these gyms you dropped. Um I hope Brian and, and, and Michael appreciate you because of, I feel like I've learned so much just in this thirty minutes. So I know you I feel like you might just be the key to this success and I'm just going to claim that over you. <laughs> but we appreciate you coming to Track Roll Summer. Yes, and bringing us the culture, waking up extra early for us. We appreciate it. Our first Tokyo Olympian on Track Roll Summer. Our first gold medalist That's from not true. Tokyo. Oh, from Tokyo. Yes. I was going to say, we've had a couple of gold medalists come through the building. Yeah. But from Tokyo. Tokyo. Um, so thank you for joining us and dealing with my crazy. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Hopefully we'll you. Hear you off and you'll come back and talk to us again. Sure. We'll, we'll do. <laughs> hopefully we can do uh, like a wedding exclusive. Oh, Lord. Um, Here she go. I got you. I got you. If it happens, you're invited. Can, Candy, run while you can. Run while you can. <laughs> well, thank, thank you, you guys. Being, um, I think all of our viewers are like saying such nice things about you in the yes, comments. In the comments. Make sure you follow mm -hmm. Kendall, Candy Kendall, Candy underscore Kendall on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Yeah. I made the TikTok thing up. Don't, don't find me on TikTok. That's my secret fun place. Okay. <laughs> find your business on TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram, yeah. Candy underscore Kendall. And you can wait till Endurance yes. to see her run next. Mm-hmm. Hi, thank you. Thank so you. Much. Thank, thank you, you for joining me. Like West Coast. Got you. No problem. Bye. That was, oh, she was so amazing. She's